Hey guys, welcome back to another quick episode of I Am Legion for Dying Light 1 and 2. Just sharing a quick update uh, on the development. So this has kind of been something that has been going for a while. And I wanted to kind of show off progress notes so you guys are aware of how it's going uh, with the armor update. So uh, for such a massive overhaul of so many different armor pieces inside the game, I went ahead and wrote a Python script that could help me with the process of loading uh, and setting up all of this uh, armor inside the game along with all of these new custom skills uh, and balancing. So for those of you who missed my last video, there's uh, there's going to be quite a lot of new custom skills that will be applied to every armor piece uh, to help define a new classification system, weight system, protection system, uh, and hopefully will also uh, affect things like your ability to swim, glide, jump move throughout the world and so to help with this you know one of the biggest challenges with this type of work is that it ends up being a matter of uh, syntax errors and the amount of time needed to test and refine and then fix so many bugs as you go uh, it ends up just being a lot of manpower issues so what i went ahead and did was wrote a script that could uh, give me a little console that would allow me to select from uh, available json data so um, i've got several tools that have been putting together that are actually parsing scripts and actually some of these are most of these are now handwritten but the initial ones were for research um, and now I have a concept of uh, armor and uh, armor keywords color scores you know different variables that come together to balance and create uh, the uniqueness that is each armor set so each one will be actually generated from kind of not a random roll of the dice but rather um, categories and defined variables where you're setting up kind of some protection but what I've done is I've also gone in and utilized chat GPT along with this system not so that any source code or anything like that is released into chat BT GPT I'm I'm very sensitive to um, the ongoing legal issues and a lot of the challenges with ChatGPT. It's a wonderful tool, but you have to use it responsibly. Um, but I did find a solution that I think is uh, is pretty useful, uh, which is that with each one of the armors, it essentially gets fed into a script that that script is using a, a prompt. So when each piece gets loaded in, it's utilizing the JSON data to get loaded in and get a unique uh, prompt that is sent over to ChatGPT. And then with each one of those, it will then return a custom name and description for each armor set. And I'm taking this a step further. The next step that I'll be working on here is going through and painfully uh, describing, writing a description for every armor piece in the game. Uh, stand by for that one. So I'm going to actually go through and write a description for each piece. So if you can imagine what that would look like, essentially you have a metal helmet, um, you have a metal helmet with a PK de uh, decal on it, with a renegade, with blood, whatever that is. A description is then loaded into here to where you actually add more weight to the description, but then you also write it to where it factors for these other variables such as weight, color, um, rank, and by weight I mean as part of the skill that's getting brought in. Uh, so in addition to that, over here we have our key uh, key term template which I brought up previously but kind of the idea is is that every category that I'm creating will have unique descriptors for what that category's strengths and weaknesses are um, things like the co-op role icon that you select so I am looking at creating custom co-op roles um, but for the ones that are currently available I've written kind of descriptors along with skills that are as I create each individual skill it will then translate over and then then I have updated keywords uh, for the armor itself and its amount of protection and then the rank overall as you find in the world. And so these aren't set in stone or anything, um, but this is just kind of explaining the process that's going into this here. And so when you have something like you know, a green, um, a green item that is a leg piece that is a level four on the armor uh, and a level five on the keyword that has this skill set 
that is under this icon uh, and is under this category and then has this description, you end up with a prompt that is just guiding this AI to where it's writing a unique prompt for each item. Um, and so I'll go ahead and show you what that would look like. So essentially inside the interface here, how this all comes together is utilizing a filter system. I can now go in here and if I want to load in any of the you know, default armor that's inside the game. I have access to each individual piece of armor uh, equipment that's in the game. Uh, if I want to load in any of my custom armor, then you can see here when you open this up, it actually gives the modify or the new custom armors and the default armors. Uh, so the idea of being able to switch between the different pieces, you can go in here and define, you know, whether or not you're trying to get a specific torso, if you're trying to get uh, some of the new custom heavy armor. So stand by, I have a lot of new approaches to where I'm building out armor sets. This new approach has the idea of seven different classifications of armor. Uh, so you have unarmored um, or uh, undressed or, or unarmored, which is, you know, you're not wearing anything, which will allow you to swim faster. Actually, you should be able to swim, run, jump, everything without any restrictions. So it should be a little bit faster than what you currently can in the game. And then as you add on clothing, it will weigh you down just a little bit, especially when it comes to things like water, um, and then adding that to certain uh, armor sets. So I am trying to also account for the fact of like, well, if you wear like a tank top uh, and you throw on bracers, uh, that could even cause the combination of those two things could make it to where it's uncomfortable to wear that armor. I don't know if I can get to that level, but I am trying to go pretty RPG um, on this solution to where um, I think I can do it. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to keep trying, keep pushing. But so the idea here is that you select these different armor sets. Currently, the system is driven downwards towards the visualization. I had the idea of flipping it to where the model visualizations drive the rest of the solution. Uh, right now I'm really driving everything by the slot and so that slot is kind of dependent on you know the different armor types or the different pieces that you're trying to put on uh, in association with these different ranks that you can give for it so if you create a skill set that is specific to head armor then as I go and I continue to refine what those are so a big dome helmet versus, you know, open faced helmet. Each one of those is going to have a different rating for, um, for protection. And then it's also going to have a different weight rating based on kind of the, the overall bulkiness of the he helmet versus like wearing a ball cap. So you want to make sure that the code is robust enough to where it's able to determine, are they wearing a cloth hat? you know, or are they wearing actually like a, an armor piece? And so that's what we're striving towards here. Um, once you select that, it's doing a lot of work on the back end. So I've said this in my previous video, but altogether it's about, I think it's 28 uh, different properties that have to go into each armor set. Uh, I've reduced it down to try to make it as public facing as possible for the hope in the future to release these tools to the public. Um, and so the idea here is, is that anyone can go in here and select the different attributes that they want for the different armor pieces. I had a button where I was essentially creating a set um, and then I got too crazy with it where I, so the future for that is, you know, going in there and calling a set a specific name. So if you define the name of a set, then you could go in there and say like, okay, I want this to be like, you know, the Green Lantern armor or something, I don't know, whatever you want to call that set, um, the hazmat suit set, diver set, uh, you know, whatever specialty you want associated with that armor that information would get fed into chat GPT so that it allows you to create pieces that are all associated with each other. So they're not kind of disconnected and just getting randomly named a bunch of different things. So far, this system's pretty powerful in creating singular, unique items. But now I have to take the code to where it's actually creating uniform, unique items uh, when it's a set. So there will be a little true or false here in the future. I started working on it. I ended up running into some bugs with it. And so I had to pull back for tonight. Um, but I'm going to continue to try to break through on that. Uh, so the idea here is that once we have everything set up how we want it, uh, all we have to do is hit the create item. Uh, once we do that, it will go ahead and send that prompt 
uh, over to the OpenAI code. It will then give us back our unique armor set. Uh, and kind of the idea here is that um, right now it's just kind of a standard, so I haven't looped in the description part of it uh, because the descriptor of the armor itself is actually going to lead the conversation. You have the name concept, which is really based off of the uh, classification of the uh, category, if you will. Um, but for this next part, the description is really going to make up a, a large amount of the of the name. So a lot of this is just block out. But once we run that, we can slide this over here. You can see that what the end result is, is that we get a printout. It's already got this calculated uh, rank, the outfit armor. It's got a color. It's got the skins appropriately assigned. Uh, it's got the different skills already applied. Uh, it's got this placeholder UI stat that I'm going to replace with unique UI stats as we go. Um, I'm essentially going to write, just because the the these fun little brackets and everything started to get in the way um, for doing a lot of the JSON formatting. And so um, just with my expertise level, I'm actually switching it around to actually try to create a script that will go in and replace my placeholder UI stats based on their armor, uh, on their armor skill so that I can actually create unique armor stats based on certain attributes on the actual skill itself. So some more work that has to get done there, but I want to make sure that for these pieces coming out, they have good descriptors. People are able to understand what is being impacted because these armors will truly affect how you play the game and how you move through the world. Um, but then the idea is, is that once you head over to the output, this is another part that was really, you know, getting in the way of, of being able to move very quickly is, is actually going over here to the output for the naming system so it's automatically giving me a string value um, and so I can just plug and play that. I will also share that kind of a fun detail here is that over time I've logged all of my different prompts over uh, to OpenAI and so you can see here uh, that I've been working on it for quite a while. Oops, I apologize. Uh, coming up with different armors and changing that prompt over time uh, so that I can refine that process to kind of determine what kind kind of names are generated uh, with each pass through. And uh, for those of you who are not aware, uh, you can actually sign up with OpenAI's uh, API. It does cost money, um, but it's like a fraction of a cent based on usage. So the more um, you kind of bulk uh, get this done at once. So it's been rough for testing. Um, as far as rough, I mean a couple of, you know, like a quarter worth of rough. Um, but it's one of those things where you have to continue to refine your approach. But I'm super excited about this because once I actually identify how I want to do this, right now I'm utilizing the 3.5 model. As soon as I get this really narrowed down, I'm going to switch it to the 4 model. Um, and uh, that should actually generate a lot better results a little bit less cheesy for sure. Um, but I just wanted to share with you guys kind of the progress update <laughs> slowly but surely um, getting there. But it's uh, it's actually become kind of a labor of love with this script at this point. Uh, having a lot of fun with it. I think the, the challenge is, is just trying to create something that allows me to expedite the process here in the future with creating armor sets for you guys um, with a lot of love put into them uh, just because uh, I know again huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters for these upcoming sets and everything that I want to create for you guys in here in the future. Um, it's one of those things where the more time you have to put into the labor of love and actually define these things, the better. And so I don't actually want to spend uh, all that time fighting syntax errors and, and whatnot. So still ongoing. But thank you guys so much for dropping in and checking out this new latest update. Um, it, well, by that, I mean update on progress. Uh, it's still working on the actual solution, but I'm super excited to share with you guys here um, by the end of the week, kind of a video of showing more of the weight class information and how the movement is affected by the different armors. Uh, and also I have a couple of new Peacekeeper armors to show off to you guys. Uh, came up with some pretty awesome heavy armor types and other uh, kits that I hope you guys are excited about. So stay tuned. More coming. Thanks everyone for your support. Hope everybody's enjoying the mod and look forward to talking to you next time. Happy gaming.